A few minutes later Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and this is it. Well, not this, but tomorrow I'm flying out to Russia to St. Petersburg to record my voice lines for Captain Jingles as well as to cover the King of the Sea finals on Saturday and Sunday. But don't worry, obviously we've got this video today, I've got a video ready for tomorrow and I have a video ready for Saturday, although there will be no mingles with Jingles next week because I'll be flying back from Russia. In the meantime, today... We have Rilo 731 here in the Tier 7 Premium British Battleship HMS Nelson on the trap map in a Tier 8 battle. Well, technically it's a Tier 8 battle, but there are only two Tier 8 ships on each team. Rilo's team have a Chapayev and a Cossack. The enemy team have a Cleveland and a Cossack. The overwhelming majority of ships on both teams, like Rilo himself, are Tier 7. Both teams also have a carrier, although they're only Tier 6 carriers. Uh, Rilo's team has a Furious. The enemy team has a Ryujo of slightly more concern of the number of destroyers in this battle. Both teams have four. And while the sheer quantity of destroyers in this particular battle are enough to keep battleship drivers up at night in cold sweats, it's the quality of the destroyer players in this battle that's going to have a slightly more significant effect because the destroyers on the enemy team seem to actually know what they're doing, and the destroyers on Rilo's team couldn't find their own asses in the dark without the aid of a map, a flashlight, and written instructions. Also, in case you're wondering, yes, just in front of Rilo, that is HMS Furious, the British Tier 6 aircraft carrier. Yes, he is moving ahead. And it's not quite as suicidal as it looks. He is a Tier 6 carrier in a mostly Tier 7, but technically Tier 8 battle. He wants to maximise the return on his squadron, so he's moving closer. He's going to be taking cover behind the island up ahead. And it's not quite as suicidal as it looks. I mean, being closer to the action is going to increase the turnaround on his uh, squadrons. And providing the team don't completely collapse and do at least manage to keep the flanks secure, he should be fine. So yeah, straight away you can see the massive, glaring, huge flaw in his plan. The start of the battle for Rilo is, well, kind of frustrating. It's mostly characterised by all of his destroyers suiciding, his radar cruisers parking behind islands and radaring targets that are already spotted anyway, while being unable to shoot at them. It also took a while for him to actually start doing any kind of meaningful damage to anything. He's got 16-inch guns and he's firing armour piercing, but, well, he'd been shooting at this Graf Spee for the best part of a minute. And couldn't seem to do anything but over-penetrate him until he finally got lucky with this last salvo. And then just as this Scharnhorst starts closing in, this is where the team's destroyers all start outdoing each other to see who can win the suicide lottery. Although, they're wasting their time because the Anshan has already won. But he's soon joined by the Mayhan, taken out by the enemy Cleveland. The team's Queen Elizabeth does manage to pull one back and finishes off the badly wounded Graf Spee. But almost immediately, the Cossack goes down to a detonation from the enemy Cossack. And that leaves just one surviving destroyer on Rilo's team, the Akatsuki. So, where's he then? What's he up to? Oh, there he is. Pinned against an island by an Icarus and a war spite. 
and by the looks of it taking flanking fire from both a Helena and a Scharnhorst's secondary batteries, so fantastic. What could possibly go wrong in this situation? Well, you've always got to try to look on the bright side. For one thing, he's definitely in a target-rich environment here, like that York over there. You'll note that Rylo has exclusively been firing armour-piercing. He's never once selected this high-explosive ammunition, which is kind of unusual for a British battleship player, particularly a Nelson, which has an extremely good high-explosive shell. It's not that the armour-piercing is bad, but British battleship armour-piercing tends to have a very short fuse. Your traditional tactic, which you can and will get away with in a Japanese, American or German battleship to aim below the waterline to guarantee a citadel hit on a broadsiding cruiser like that York or that Fiji doesn't really work too well with British armour piercing because the fuses tend to arm upon hitting the water and before they actually strike the side of the ship. Sometimes the high explosive is actually a better choice. The advantage of this short fused British battleship armour piercing ammunition is that when you're shooting at cruisers, as Rilo is doing now, because the shells have such a short arming time, in theory, you shouldn't see as many over penetrations. And Rilo's put that theory to the test as the rest of his team continues to crumble and die around him. The York is given almost perfect broadside here and... Yeah, still more over penetrations than penetrations. Now it's at the point when the cyclone starts closing in where things begin to get really interesting. And nobody wants an interesting war. Boring wars are the best kinds of wars. The Icarus and the Warspite are closing in. Now I can't definitely remember the range of the Icarus's torpedoes, but I think they're seven kilometers. Or around about as far away as he is now. So Rilo is backing up. And again, I can't help but feel that he might have had better results if he'd had the high explosive loaded, until, plot twist, there's a Sims on his right, and the Sims isn't alone. There's a Sean horse with him, so this armour piercing might prove to be useful after all. The Sims is close enough for the Nelson's secondaries to start opening up, which means he's definitely close enough to have fired torpedoes, and the Sean horse also has torpedoes, with a 6 kilometer range. So there are probably Scharnhorst torpedoes on the way, as well as the Sims torpedoes and the torpedoes from the Icarus. But that was a fairly narrow window between those two islands for any incoming torpedoes. And Rilo has been backing up from the Icarus, so he's probably out of range of the, any torpedoes that the Icarus might have launched. And he's given a good angle against any torpedoes fired by the Sims or the Scharnhorst. That was a set of three torpedoes. Those are from the Scharnhorst. There are the Icarus torpedoes, and yep, they didn't have the range because he's been backing up. Didn't see any torpedoes from this Sims, however. You know, I don't think the Sims actually fired any torpedoes through that gap between the islands. I suspect he didn't like the angle much, and he predicted exactly the manoeuvre that Rilo was going to pull, but I'll bet you he's got torpedoes on the way now. And all Rilo can really hope to do is keep his bows pointing towards the Sims and hope that there's enough of a gap, or at the very least that he's only going to take one of them on the chin. Now the Sims is turning around, I'm not entirely sure why, unless he was saving a torpedo tube. But Rilo's got him, unfortunately. Two things. First, he is going to take one of these torpedoes, but only one. And secondly, he's almost fresh out of teammates, there's only Rilo, and that Furious, parked behind the island, left on his team. Now remember, flooding damage was recently nerfed. It, it's no worse than having a single fire, so don't be so quick to hit, not that Rilo can because it's on cooldown, but don't be so quick to hit that damage control button when you take a torpedo hit that causes flooding. Of slightly more concern is the fact that the Icarus is closing in once more, and the Scharnhorst is due to make an appearance around this corner. Shots out. Not expecting any citadels, it's a German battleship after all, but a good solid chunk of armour-piercing damage. He took off about half of the Scharnhorst's remaining health. Now, of course, he doesn't want the Scharnhorst to do the same to him, so he has to get the bows around. Which is going to be dangerous, because there's an Icarus over there. But better the devil you know than the devil you don't. The Furious, still taking fire from the Icarus, and he doesn't know it yet, but he's about to choke on a whole bunch of torpedoes fired by that Scharnhorst. Not great news for the Furious, but very, very good news for Rilo here. 
because it means he doesn't have to worry about the Sharnhorst's torpedoes on top of everything else, which is not an awful lot of relief, but hey, in this kind of situation, you've got to take it where you can find it. The Furious chokes, as predicted, on the Sharnhorst's torpedoes. But he did manage to get a squadron of torpedo bombers into the air, so technically, Rilo is now the last surviving member of his team. But those torpedo bombers are making a run on the Sharnhorst from the other side. And I do believe they're going to get him. And they did. <laughs> well done, the Furious. Uh, let's not get too excited, however. The Icarus is closing in, Rilo still has four enemy ships to deal with, and they're behind on points, and they're behind on caps. And he does get a little bit unlucky with this Icarus. Again, he's still firing the armor-piercing, but... Well... Look at this. 16 health remaining. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Come on, go, go, gadgets, secondary gun batteries. And... Yep, there it is, close quarters expert. <laughs> now, while Rilo is technically the last player left alive on his team, because he's the last player with a ship on his team, the Furious player still has control of his torpedo bombers. So he can, theoretically, continue to spot for Rilo. Wouldn't it be fantastic if he'd actually thought of that instead of just throwing his torpedo bombers away in an attack against the war spite? And so, of course, that's exactly what he did. Yeah, well, I guess you really are on your own now, Rilo. And here come the enemy dive bombers from the Ryujo. However, bear one thing in mind. We're in the middle of the cyclone. Visibility has been reduced to 8 kilometers, so those dive bombers didn't actually see Rilo's ship until they were 8 kilometers away. And that did not leave the dive bomber an awful lot of time. I mean, it looked like a fairly good lineup, and yet he didn't release his bombs. I guess he must have run out of time. So that means that squadron was subjected to anti-aircraft fire all the way in, and now all the way out, and then they're turning around and coming back, and they're going to be subjected to anti-aircraft fire all the way back in again. So we can forget about that squadron. They're all going to die. Of slightly more pressing concern is the enemy war spite, who's about to make an appearance right ahead of Rilo. And the war spite has 15-inch guns, which can punch clean through the paper-thin bow armour on the Nelson. But not if you're firing high explosive, and he is, and Rilo isn't, and he has 16-inch guns, and he can punch clean through the bow armour on the war spite as well. First two turrets fired, let's just swing the nose around a little, get the third turret firing. Are you trying to bow tank 16-inch guns in a tier 6 battleship? I don't think so, Sunshine. <laughs> I really don't. No time to celebrate, however, here comes the Cossack. Oh, and he caught Rilo completely by surprise as he was turning to get the third turret shooting at the war spike, but he made one critical mistake. He assumed that Rilo wasn't going to turn, and he ripple-fired the torpedoes, all at exactly the same point. If he'd actually fired a spread of torpedoes, one or more of them would probably have hit, and would almost certainly have caused flooding that Rilo wouldn't be able to do anything about because his damage control is on cooldown after extinguishing the fires set by the war spike. So, nice try, Cossack. Cost you a lot of your health, and you didn't actually do any damage. Well, he did some damage. He got some shots off with his 5-inch guns, but it was a mere scratch. Now, here's the thing about the Cossack. It's not terribly fast. It has a top speed of 36 knots, but it does have a speed boost. And with the Cyclone lifting and visibility increasing, and having used his only torpedo launcher, he should probably be using that speed boost, and he isn't to go undetected, and he isn't because he's firing, to get away from the Nelson so this doesn't happen. And he could maybe kill him with a slightly better torpedo launch once it's reloaded. But, well, that's a whole lot of should-haves, would-haves, could-haves, didn't. Now, it's a measure of just how far Rilo has had to carry this crowd of losers that despite those four kills, he's still behind on points. And if he can't find and kill that Ranger, he's gonna lose. And he's in a Nelson. He only has a top speed of 25 knots. If the Ranger doesn't want to be caught, he's not going to be caught. And the Ranger has the benefit of aircraft. He's always going to know, or should always know, exactly where Rilo is. In fact, even without the benefit of aircraft, you just have to look at the top of the screen to see that somebody is capping B to... Oh, wait, yes, that's right. He doesn't have to find and kill the Ranger. All he has to do is capture B, and then he has more points coming in. 
Then he just has to stay alive until the end of the battle, and he can win on points. But all the carrier has to do is keep resetting him. He doesn't have to sink him. So where are his aircraft? Well, they keep getting shot down, don't they? <laughs> it's highly likely at this point that the Ryujo doesn't have a complete squadron to put into the air. But he didn't need to put a complete squadron into the air. Just one or two aircraft would have done. All he has to do is hit Rilo and reset the capture progress. But he didn't. So now, the ball is firmly in the aircraft carrier's court. Rilo, of course, is heading for Charlie. He's going to try to take that as well. Because they're still behind on points. They have more points coming in. But there's something that the Ryujo could do about that. Rilo's heading for Charlie, which makes a lot of sense from his point of view. It's an uncaptured capture point, and heading north has taken him further away from the Ryujo, which will increase the turnaround in any attacks that the Ryujo sends against him. It's not rocket science here, it's the obvious thing to do. The Ryujo, who's down to the south anyway, can still win this for his team, and he can do it 100% safely. All he has to do is drive into Alpha. He doesn't even have to cap it, he just has to contest it to stop the points coming in for Rilo's team. But he makes absolutely no effort to do so. Instead, he just keeps sending air attacks. He, oh, hang on a second, it's a Ranger, it's not a Ryujo. <laughs> oh, you noticed that, did you, Jingles? We're all so surprised, said everybody. Yeah, all right, I get it. But think about it, that's actually worse. The Ranger's actually faster than the Ryujo. He has absolutely no excuse for not having capped Alpha at this point. And instead, he keeps just throwing aircraft away, uh, trying to score some more damage instead. I mean, I haven't sat down here and done the maths. It's possible that there was nothing the Ranger could have done, but at the point where the Cossack died, the Ranger's team were 26 points ahead, and both teams only had three points coming in every tick from captures. If he had immediately, at that point, headed to Alpha and capped it, while Rilo was heading north to cap Charlie, both teams would still have only had three points coming in every tick. And when it became obvious that Rilo was heading north and not looking for the Ranger, because he saw him doing it with his aircraft, the Ranger should then immediately have turned north as well, and capped or contested Bravo. They had the points lead, all they had to do was keep it, but instead he just continued to expend aircraft in fruitless and pointless attacks against a tier 7 battleship that he never really stood any chance of sinking. And then in the dying seconds of the match, Rilo clinches yet another capture, and with less than five seconds to go, if that Ranger thinks he's going to win this game with a single torpedo bomber, he's a lot more optimistic than even I gave him credit for. But, well, let's not be too harsh on the Ranger. I mean, he was under a lot of pressure as well. He was also the last surviving player on his team, and he was bottom tier, so... At least he tried. Rilo, however, well done, my son. No crack at Unleashed because, you know, only four kills, but just about every other medal and award imaginable, including Solo Warrior. Rilo, thank you for sending that one in. It's always nice to see somebody doing well in a British battleship. Not that I'm biased, of course. Everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.